Okay, I started this painting a little bit ago of transparent red oxide, transparent brown oxide, transparent yellow oxide, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson and white. And um, I thought, oh, I'm having so much fun with this fur on this dog that, you know, somebody might want to see how I'm doing it. I have this little scruffy, worn out, I think size four, no, size two brush. And I'm just going to continue painting and try not to bump the camera because it's right in front of me. And it's actually my phone. And I'm starting with what's the furthest away from me. And I usually do that in landscape, but I rarely do that um, with animals or people or portraits. I often start with the eyes and work out. So, oh, a little different. And my chair is a bit squeaky today, so excuse that. If it, I hope it won't bother you. All right. So I'm just, I, I did kind of a muted background with some of the same colors. I did add a torrid gray in honor of Earth Day. So we make this oil out of the recycled pigments collected from our air filtration system. So <laughs> it's a neat gray. But this year it's kind of a cool gray. It leads to me a little more toward the bluish side. So I put some of that down here and over here because I wanted a more coolness in the sand around him and not necessarily that you could even tell that this is sand. But the colors that I use in him, I also want in the background. Him, her, I don't know. I don't know the gender of the dog. That's okay. All right, so. Main thing is this layer's got to be lighter than the layer behind it for it to show up. So we shall see. And I think I went a little too straight out there. Wiped off the paint. And because this is wet, I can push that down a little bit. I want that a little more soft, a little softer edge anyway. And if I want the background to cover some of that up, I can come back with that. I want a soft edge here because I want the focus to be on, on the face. Okay. I did have a fairly detailed drawing to start with, so that's helpful. Needs to be a little redder, browner, darker, not dark enough. Red and brown oxide. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. I'm laying in the darks, and then the light will be on top of that. Kind of scumbling as I go because I want the paint fairly thin, especially when I start. I'm going to add some ultramarine blue. Um, to my mixture to make it even darker. Ultramarine blue and uh, this reddish orange kind of make a complementary um, feel to it and allows uh, the orange to kind of be neutralized and darken and um, you know, play with complementary colors, neutralize each other. It's kind of fun. All right, while well, I've got that dark mixture, I'm going to put some of that over here. Uh, it's actually very similar to his eyes. I'm just going to fill in a circle. I'll come back and add detail to that in a minute. just want to know where they are. His nose also is very dark. might even be black, but um, it's made with the browns and the ultramarine blue. Add a little more of that. Makes a really good dark. And just a little dark right around his mouth. And kind of blur around his eyes. I squint and no, that's not the right color, but I'm just creating the darker part. dark right around his eyes and I'll get a smaller brush a line um a round brush to put that in probably just squinting to see where the dark is really tears up this brush. It used to be a nice flat brush, but 
my scrub sometimes when I paint, and that probably uh, terrifies some artists, but Albert Handel actually more or less taught me this method. Lay in um, your first layer very thin and dry, and then when you go over it, you won't create mud because it's not wet. And for oil paint not to be wet, that's really nice because, you know, it takes a while for it to dry. All right, see, so if it's too wet, see, like that right there, I just wiped it off. I decided I wanted a little bit of that dark up underneath there. I want to add that. Oil painting is uh, traditionally dark to light, and it's fat over lean. So if I have a real lean first layer, then I'm going to be able to lay in the fatter layer on top. I don't have any mineral spirits in my brush. I could, but then that would make it flow too much. And right now, I want it pretty dry. And that's... My, this brush is probably too messed up to really get a good outline on that eye. At least I know it's there. I'll come back and do that in a minute, because I do want the eye, make sure the eyes are right. Okay, squinting... Even down here is darker. Right here is darker. Now that's the ground. Beside this nose is darker. And in his mouth. And here's a little darker. See, if you don't make the darks dark enough, then the lights aren't going to show. And working in watercolor has also helped me with that concept. Okay. All right, I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I think I'll even hit it in the mineral spirits and then dry it off. I wanna come back with a lighter color. This is gonna be really warm right up here. I'll even lean toward yellow and gold. Might even pull out some um, Indian yellow if I can get that to be the right uh, color. Okay, that's a little too warm for that. I need to neutralize it a little bit. Orange neutralized is blue, but I don't want to go as dark as the ultramarine because that would darken it too much. So I have kind of a blue violet on my palette. And I'll add a little white to that. Compare it, probably not quite light enough, but we'll see. It's very similar to what's behind it. You can see it's not as vibrant, and that's why, because I put just a little bit of the orange. I'm sorry, the blue in the orange. Change the direction of my brush so you get the feel of the dog's fur. And I'll probably have to shift to a better point in a minute. But that, that'll go to the details. Might not get to the details today. Try to lay it in the shape, the direction the fur grows. And I'm losing some of the definition in here, but I think once I lay in some lighter tones on top of that, then uh, that'll be fine. I do want to cover the white of the canvas. I'm going to pick up some lighter tones. And the fact that my background, it has some gold tones in it, but it also has some blue, uh, helps give kind of a warm, cool difference, I think. It's a subtle shift, but I think it'll be enough. If not, I'll go back and adjust it. Okay, his fur is very short there, so... I'm not making long strokes. His ear is getting a little redder, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that transparent red oxide, throw that in to warm up my gold mixture. Burnt sienna would also probably work, but I didn't have that on my palette. What I realized is the background back here wasn't 
red enough or dark enough to push this ear forward. So I'm coming back with a little more of that transparent red oxide also on my brush. Just want that transition to be a little more obvious. We're going to do the same thing down here. When I push this darker in the background, it pushes the foreground forward. So now this is in front of this, this is in front of this. And I'm going to add some brighter, oh, that's not bright enough, brighter golden tones right in here. And that might not be warm enough. Add a little bit of that. Kind of an orangey tone to it. Yeah, I like that better. Could it might be might need to be a little lighter. But orange is the warmest color on your color wheel, if you didn't know that. Because it's made with both primary colors that are warm. I'm gonna lighten that up. Oop, didn't wipe my brush. Let's try again. I want this very warm, but I want it the value to be light. Let's see if that's, and again, you see that thick glob of paint is because you can do fat over lean. So, you know, this, this dog is going to take a while to dry. That's okay. All right. I like that better. And it's a very light touch, but with the very light touch, I'm adding this upper layer of fur. And just giving it little swishes here and there. I don't want it too light back here because that's um, darker than what's in the front. So I want to just make sure that the lightest part, that still could be lighter. Squint my eyes. Now white cools things down. So I try to mostly add the light with other yellows and pale oranges. Gives it more light and life. I don't want to cover up all the dark that I laid in, but I do want it to be seen in the back. So I leave little gaps in between. I want it redder around his eyes. So I didn't even rinse my brush off or anything. I just went back and picked up some of that red oxide. Precious mess. I don't think that's quite dark enough. We'll come back. And I noticed that this fur is over this, so I'm going to come in here again with more red oxide. I'm going to mix it a little bit more in my brush, get rid of some of that white that I had. And lay in more of a red mixture. I think there was a little bit of lizard crimson on my brush. And again, this is too dark, but this is underneath what's going to be over it. So I just want some of that underlying fur to have some contrast. And there won't be any contrast if there's no dark. It's now we're getting the personality. All right, I want a mid-tone color. I don't want too light more than just um, yellow ochre, but that's pretty close. All right, not light enough. I 
and I'll probably need to get a bigger, uh, smaller brush. These, I'm, I'm getting some broad lines, which is fine because I don't really want to have to draw every single piece of fur. That's, I try to stay with the biggest brush I can for as long as I can. And this one doesn't even have a good point, but um, I can often get the feel of what I want um, pretty well. Now that's going to obviously get a lot darker. Light touch, move in the direction of the fur. Needs to be lighter over here. Flip of the wrist can kind of give you a, a little bit of the fur feel. That line's too hard, harsh. It's a little dark for that part. So I'm going to just feather that fur out. I like that better. All right. Well, let's keep going. All right, this center part of the nose, there's a lot of orange in there. I'm going to add a little bit more of I think it's Cad Yellow Deep. It's, it's more of a yellow-orange. Now looking at that, that needs to be darker, redder. Pick up a little bit of that transparent red oxide. Mix that in. Very similar to what's on the tip of his nose. Very similar to what's over here to the left. So I want that redder underneath. And I have to be careful, it's red here and a little lighter and then darker there. So um, I don't want to overdo that. Now part of it is upper jaw, the chop, whatever you call it. Um, come in there and then you see his, his mouth below. All right, there is light. It's light right on his nose, right underneath his nose. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the golden color a little lighter. That is going to be more of a hard edge. One of the few hard edges in the painting. So I, I want that right up to create the edge of the nose and that's too dark. I mean too light. So I'm going to lift some of that up. Light, darker, lighter darker. I'll come back with um, a little more red and a different brush in a little bit. This one's harder to control. I think I'm going to have to make the undertones on this a little darker so that when I put the lightest light on there, it's going to glow a little better. It's going to look a little dark to start with. But again, if you don't create, if it's not dark enough, you're not going to see your lights. Right in through here is very light, so I haven't hit that at all with, um, with much. Uh, okay, it's pretty dark down there. And pretty red. Right along the edge here, as it as it goes, the next thing is the dark sand and shadow, so I don't need much definition there. Alright, I need two switch brushes. It's going to be another small brush. The exact same kind of brush. See the difference? How one's worn down? This is a newer version of that same brush. So it's one of, it's one of my favorite. All right, right now I'm going to try to mix that pink with what I have on my palette, which is alizarin crimson. I'm going to just add white to start off with. That's pretty bold. Okay, that's way too bright. So the, I want to dull that down. It's kind of a gray tone. I don't have any green on my palette to neutralize the pink, but green has blue in it. So I'm picking a little bit of my ultramarine blue, adding white, and I think that's going to tone it down a bit. I, didn't make the tongue quite long enough, so I'll hang that out a little bit more. That looks pretty dark. Add some white to that. Oh, no, I want it pinker. Okay, looks like I dulled it too much. 
it's not very vibrant at all right now. Yeah. I'll just mix something in on it and see how that does. Not near light enough. So I'll mix a very pale alizarin crimson pink. Come in on the side of my brush. Still not quite bright enough. But I might have to go to a different color, but I really want to try to stick with the colors that are on my palette. That, that helped a little bit. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to bump the camera. Alright, now we're gonna add teeth. I'm just loading white and I'm putting it on the corner of my brush, just the corner. Let me see if I can just lay it in. Yeah, I'll try that with a different brush. Going for a smaller one now. This one is a number two round. And I kind of roll it, spin it as I load my brush. Just want a dot down here. And the paint's too thick, too wet. All right, I have two choices when the paint's too wet. One choice is I can come behind it because it's too big anyway, and I can cut in with a darker color. And that wasn't quite heavy enough. So I'm going to do that first, cut in with a darker color. Actually, gets really dark right around the mouth. So I'm going to go back to that alizarin crimson, I mean, uh, that ultramarine blue color. And right along here is really dark. Okay, and it's pretty dark right up under here. Okay, I've curved down too much with the mouth. You can see right here, uh, that's more straight, so I cleaned off my brush. And I'm going to lift some of that off. Painting with oil is a lot of push and pull. Right now I'm pushing this away. And I notice there's kind of a bluish tint to that tongue. So I'm going to come back in with just more blue up under here in the shadow. And uh, drag some of the texture of that tongue out. Now I'll do kind of the opposite. I'm going to go pick up that light pink again. It's kind of dry, so I might have to make it thicker. Because if it's not thick enough, it won't stay. All right, this right here is kind of blurred. And on here, the lower lip is has a hard, sharp edge. So I'm going to come back and make that. I actually think I made the tongue a little too long when I was fixing it. So I'm going to go back and make that lower lip. I'm going to push the tongue back because there's dark right up under the tongue and behind the teeth. Oh, need more ultramarine blue. It needs to be darker. And I'm bracing my arm on my easel to get a smooth line. I like that better. Now it just needs to be a little thicker, whiter. Okay, good. I like that. All right, so I'm looking for other darks I can make while I've got it on my brush. I'm going to put a little bit more up under here. A little bit more in through here. Sometimes you drag the paint into the other paint. Sometimes you drag it away. So I dragged it into both of these areas. That's gotten a little dark. So I just come back with my stiff brush. If I want to lift something, I can just come drag it and lift it up over it, and it kind of helps uh, create the fur. All right, up here, I see it's a little darker up in there. So while I've got the dark on my brush, I'm going to come back in with a little more dark. Let's get some more dark on the brush. Yeah. 
a little more down here that's a little too vibrant to be in the shadows I want that to be more muted That's better. I wanted that warmer. Okay. I have a class this afternoon, so I'm trying to finish this, or the majority of it, before they come. So I think I might be able to. Oh, All right, before I go any further, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to go ahead and work on the eyes. I really like to have the eyes established and make sure that um, I capture the personality of the dog. So I'm taking the alizarin and the ultramarine and I'm making a very dark dark with that. I put a touch of yellow ochre in that and then that creates a mixture of the three primaries and that makes a super good dark almost black. So gotta be careful with the shape of the eye. is a dark gold. It's pretty good. Tiny bit of shimmer on the outside edge. Probably from the sky reflecting. It has a bit of blue in it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Now I've lost some of the dark. Let's come back and get that. I'm looking at the negative shapes around the eye. It's kind of a triangle of dark on this far side. And it's darker in here. Because his eye is pushed back. It's darker under here because of some of the coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and establish that. And we can come back with some lighter fur in a bit. Uh, I've lost the shape of the eye. Come back. Put that round back in. You always want the, uh, even though you can't see the pupil much, you want it centered. I don't have any light reflecting on it yet. I want a little more orangish brown for that eye. And we'll hit it with highlights. Uh, there's a tiny bit of blue in the white. And it is not pure white. The teeth are actually lighter than the eye reflection. And there's a little bit of moisture. I'm going to brace my finger. There's a little bit of moisture right there. Give that a little light. Not sure why I did that. Got to take it out. It's all right. There was a light bit of fur right there. And that was just the wrong color. All right, one eye down, one to go. Hope you can. I hope I'm not covering anything up when I'm. Hope you can see that. Okay, this one's higher up because his head's tilted. It's dark all the way around, so I'm going to establish that dark all the way around first. It's kind of pointed toward the end. And I'm going to blur it out. This is fur. Got to figure out what's fur and what's eyeball. Okay. 
and what's really short fur right around the eye. Kind of comes to a point. And it gets a little darker up this way. A little redder in there. I'm going to go ahead and put that in while I'm noticing it. Right up to his eye. It's actually a little redder over here, so I'm going to add some more of that. This is transparent red oxide. I do like working with it. I'm going to come back with that dark mixture that I had earlier and make this part out here a little whiter. This is ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, and my brush still had some of the transparent red oxide in it. So I just wanted to thicken that a little bit because the space between the shadow and the eye uh, had a little too much space there. So I wanted to widen that. And that could actually even be darker. So pick up a little more of the darker part and go from there. While I have it on my brush, the highlight of this dog's eye is almost smack dab in the center of the pupil. And I hardly ever will put a uh, reflection dead center in a pupil. I really would per prefer to put it slightly off. So I'm going to do it. This one, is, this one is centered, but I had some more to the side. So I think when I do that, it'll... Um, It'll balance. I don't want the highlight to look like, uh, sorry, I just hit the camera again. I don't want the highlight to look like the, that it's the actual center of the eye. It makes it look kind of funky. Do that on people too. All right, when I look at this eye, the iris is lighter on the back side. More light is getting to it, and the front side is darker. So I want to add a redder tone, more gold, golden red, orange, to this side. And then that makes that other side look about right. Can I go back to my mixture of highlight? Again, um, this one has a tiny, tiny bit of blue in it. And I look at the moisture on the eye. Uh, I'm going to first put that very similar to the location. So it needs to be a little brighter than the other one. I, I'm going to wash my brush off. I just hit it with mineral spirits when I wash it off and then I dry it. I don't want it to be fluid. There's actually some moisture on the very interior right here. And I've kind of made that look square. I don't like that. So I need to come back and work on the shape again. I'm going to make the outside of this eye a tad lighter. Oops, sorry. I have to get close. My bifocals don't focus way back here. <laughs> and this is a longer video than I thought it was going to be, so sorry about that. Okay, I like that better. Now I need to reestablish the dark around the eye, the, where it's just sitting in the eye socket. It's pretty good back there. It's a little thicker back there. I take my other brush and I need to soften that line. Might have just obliterated it, but try that again. Out of the top of that line. Oh, I did it again. So sorry. One of these days I'll get a uh, <laughs> uh, a camera with a zoom lens. I'm using my phone right now because it can get close, but my uh, M50 doesn't really zoom well enough when I'm painting up and down like this, and and I don't I don't enjoy painting flat when I'm working on stuff like this. I feel like I get a better. It's also easier on my neck. You look down too much too too long during the day, and it really starts to hurt. You don't think about that as an artist. You know, if you work flat, you're you're bending down. It's like all the, you know all the people that are staring at their cell phones. I do that too. So, but I'm trying to do. Less of that. 
I actually put my phone on Do Not Disturb yesterday while I was painting. Let me do that. That's a pretty good idea. All right, and the gray tones come up here. I'm getting ready for that highlight bit. A little darker in through here while I have that on my brush. Break up that just a touch. He's so cute. All right, also where I have the dark, I need to go ahead and do his nose. Kind of like the fact you can't really see the nostrils. And more dark, but I know they're there. Whoa, that's a little too dark. Had more on my brush. Stare at that. I think his nose comes out a little further. Can't see it a little bit more here than what I had. Going back to my more defined flat brush. And there's light on the back side of this nose. So I'm just laying this flat brush right up against the dark to lighten that a little bit. And it looks like my background needs to come in just a touch. So it's a little thick here. You can tell his fur is wet. So I'm going to drag that in a bit. Wipe my brush between each stroke. Now I'll come back with darker fur color. A little bit on the orangey brown tone. And it's darker on the outside. And then comes in. But it's not a straight line. Matter of fact, it's some curvy stuff there going on it's dark and wet and he's cute or she whatever it is just kind of flipping my brush Coming toward it here, just in the direction of the fur. I do need to lighten up a little bit, but I'm not going to fool with that till I... Oh, until I get his snout done. I'm going to stop for just a minute and take a break. As I walked away, the first thing I noticed was the eyes, I mean, the dark around the eyes wasn't quite dark enough. I had picked up a little bit of black when I did the nose, and the intensity of the dark in the eyes needs to be the same as in the mouth. So I need to go back with my little brush and add some finer line of dark around that see if that'll make a difference gotta brace my finger i don't have much left i want to add a little more white to the teeth and finish his uh, fur on the top of his snout darken around the eyes maybe highlight a little make the highlights a little brighter and then stare at it for a little bit and see how that goes right now the advantage i have is this is all dry so whatever I do is uh, easier. I don't have to worry about it getting mixed up too much. When I stepped away, I realized that the dark in the eyes are not near dark enough. So I put some black paint on my palette. Sometimes I need the intensity of that. I often mix it with something else. Uh, and right now I'm working on a dry painting because I had to step away uh, longer than I thought last week. Yeah, hear that? It's last week. But the advantage I'm having right now is I can take this black that I'm laying in and soften it out to create the shadows around his eyes. And if I smear it too much, then I can lift it off because the painting underneath is dry. So that is a nice advantage. All right, I want a little more dark in the pupils of the eyes. So that'll also make 
the um, highlights look a little brighter. And I might come back and add more to that later. But I like I like that eye. To me, if you can see, I think you can truly see the difference. How much adding enough dark makes that difference. And um, I'm just going to continue working on that. I put out fresh paint because the paint that I had last week has um, passed its prime. So I'm just going to work away a little bit without much commentary and just wanted to, no, oh, that's a little, it's a little too orange. I'm going to tone that down a little browner tone. Uh, I'm mixing uh, transparent brown oxide and yellow ochre. And I'm still using the little brush that I used around the eyes just to try to divide up some of the larger strokes I had last week and add a little bit of depth and variation in his fur. I bet you're just dying for me to do that other eye, aren't you? Yeah, I know what you mean. I'm also taking some yellow ochre, adding some white to it. Just playing around with the color of the fur. And I really don't want to draw each and every little bitty strand of fur. That's really not uh, an ideal. I'm just Get the feel of the fur, the direction of the fur. I had to lean back. Always step back from your work. It's so easy to forget that. I'm mixing up some red, transparent red oxide, brown, transparent brown oxide. This part in through here looks a little uh, too pale. I want it a richer shadow, so I'm adding a more transparent color back there, and uh, I like how they allow the underneath to show through. And again, just creating kind of a glaze in my brush. It's a very thin mixture, but it's going to create a little more uh, depth in his ear. I just wiped my brush off so I have very little paint on it and I can blur out just what I added to create a softer transition. Again, can't do this if the painting was wet. So sometimes it's nice to have time to come back to it another day. Before I do this part of his face, I am going to uh, come back with um, right into his eye. I brace my finger on the side of the painting because I don't want to shake. Again, I wiped my brush off, did not uh, rinse it off, I just wiped it off. And I'm smearing, okay, that's a little too dark, that part right there, so I'm going to lift that off. There's a little dark right below the eye, but it doesn't go that far out. So, when you hear that little ding, little, that's, that's just my mineral spirits being, um, brush being rinsed out. Here's a clean brush, no paint at all, a little bit of mineral spirits. And I'm coming back in on a dry painting. Just taking that off. So now that's more what that is. It needs to be lighter right in through here compared to over there. So. And I think 
the golden part of this eye is goes up a tad higher and you can see a little bit of it. And have yellow ochre <clears throat> with a little white. Oh, another thing you can do. If you're not sure of a color, you can put it on an index card, kind of going for that area right there. I don't have it quite light enough, or I can test it on my painting. It's like, oh, no, a little lighter. But if you don't want to test it on your painting first, you can put it on an index card. That's a nice little quick tool. Also, sometimes when you want to lighten a color, it's better to lighten it with another color versus white, because white cools everything off. So what I've just done is I've added a little lemon, no, that's cad yellow, a little cad yellow and white to the mixture to add, make it a little warmer rather than a cooler color. I want that still lighter. You can hear the trash truck outside. I don't know if you can hear that on the video or not. It is trash day. So right now I'm just squinting my eyes to see where the lighter part of his fur is and trying to put little bits of that where I see it as I start working toward his nose. Okay, this is gonna read lighter just because there's no paint underneath it. Probably need a stiffer brush. This one's not very stiff. I, if, I, if you look here, you can see it's warmer, it's more yellow. So I'm going to add a cad yellow medium, which is more like a yellow orange. But it's very warm. Orange is the warmest color on your color wheel. Again, if I want to test it, okay, that's glowing. So it's a light from the, so, but, okay, still need it lighter. Indian yellow is also a great color to paint sunshine. So if I can't get it warm enough by mixing. When I add the white, it's definitely going to get cooler, but yeah, that's, that's better. Okay, the reason why I mentioned having a stiffer brush is I'm working with very dry paint, and very dry paint doesn't move very well, so you need to have a brush that you can kind of shove it and push it around. So I think I'm going to swap to my to my other one. Rinse that out in my mineral spirits, dry off my brush. I'm going to pick up this, it's number four, I believe. Nope, number two. When I turn it sideways, I can really drag that uh, paint along and uh, move it a little easier. Still don't have the color right. Um, I'm gonna come in with, see what this does. It's a lot oranger, but I kinda like the warmth of it. Because he is sitting out on the, in the sand at the beach somewhere. You know, you can, it's hard to add intensity. You can always tone it down, but sometimes you just have to get a different color to create the warmth that you want. I'm just kind of glazing over some of his fur to, with this same color. It's just a very thin bit on my brush, but I'm just adding warmth to his fur. It is her fur. I don't know. Um, I'm looking here. This needs to, the, his little leg needs to come down more. I have the sand here that makes this leg look skinny. The photo does kind of make it look skinny, but the darkness actually comes up under his chin and I don't have that. So I'm going to get a little bit of transparent brown oxide and the black. And I'm going to go up under here to create that, the darkness in the leg, a little more predominant. And the sand underneath is actually pretty dark. So I'm going to change that as well because it's in the shadows. Now what I just put is a little too brown, so I'm going to pick up my um, ultramarine blue and uh, just change the temperature of it. Sometimes just changing the temperature of a color will uh, let you realize it's it's not the same thing. These two have the same value. That is a dark 
dark brown, reddish brown, but this is a dark, dark blue. And I think it'll read better for the shadows. I'm going to put a little bit more of that, that dark blue up under here. It's got too much black in it. Again, it's easier to do because the painting's dry. That's too dark, so I'm going to come back with a brush. Oops, let me rinse that out a little better. Rinse it out, dry it off, and push, push the shadow back. You can actually pull some of the shadow up into the fur, just like I was doing uh, some of the other um, colors earlier. Push that back a little bit more. See how I'm just, I'm, this is not a very good thing to do to your brush. It will wear it out. I should be using my older brush. I don't want that to be ultra smooth because it's fur. So I'm going to come back with a clean brush, drag my brush over the dry fur, revealing some of the fur underneath, and clean that up a little bit. I like that better. All right, up under here should have some dark as well. So I'm going to pick a little bit more of that up. Just going to tap in between where a little bit of that would show. Come back. Clean my brush a little better. Clean my brush. Dry it off. Now lift off between where you want that to show, leaving some of it. There. I like that better. Okay, backing up again, I see that this area could be a little darker. So I'm going to add some warm dark by the, uh, the transparent Green, oh, yeah. transparent brown oxide and a little bit of that cad yellow dark deep it's a that'll make it warm a little more of the brown in there it's too late no that's still that's close enough when I squint it's still darker all right this reads rather chalky so it needs warmth so I'm going to add warmth in here I have that Orange mixed with the transparent brown oxide. Well, not orange. It's actually cad yellow deep, but it looks like a yellow orange. And if you add too much white to your painting, it's going to have a chalkiness to it. So that's another reason why if you want to add something light to your work or lighten the colors, try to lighten it with another color first before you lighten it with white. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You gotta go with what you have. Okay, the, the dark back here, that is a little too intense compared to that. So there's a little wider swath of fur before it gets dark. And I'm kind of missing the shape. So I have the shape right here, but then it dents in right here, kind of above his eyebrow. And I didn't really have that before. Okay, so now we want kind of a medium color. Whoop, don't go out on me. around the edge of his ear. Uh, oops, that's way too dark. Lighten that up. I just put, I wiped off what was on my brush and put some lighter paint on there. It's still too dark. I'm not rinsing my brush off, I'm just adding more light to my paint. And I'm gonna go a little thicker. Because the thickest should be on top. All right, that's looking a little better. While I have a little light on my brush, I'll make that piece look a little more buried. It was a little flat. Add a little more light right in here. And I'll come back then to his snout. Break some of that up. Add some little flicks of fur. Turn my brush sideways for that. needs to be darker over here because it comes up a little higher. So I'm going to get a little bit of that warm color I mixed earlier, add a little more red, transparent red oxide to it to, to be a little more warm in the shadows. Oh, that's too light. needs to be darker. Kind of goes out from the nose. So I'm going to just dab where that is following the shape. Okay, well now we establish the darks, and we will come back with uh, some of the lights pulled, pulling into it. 
traditional oil is light over dark. It's a little bit strange. Might I'm just wiping my brush off, and then I'm going to see if I can actually I can clean it off, dry it off, and then drag my brush back into the darks that I just put in to give the feel of that fur coming out. And I'm just lifting off the color to reveal what's underneath. I need to be a little darker over there because it's in the shadows. And it looks like he's wet. So, making that. Yeah, it looks like he's been in the water. All right, there's a lot of red to his chin, her chin, whatever. And I'm going to carry that right over here, up this direction, because you can't see the, um, well, you can't see where the mouth opens, but it's darker along in here. A little darker there, a little darker there. If it's wet, you can drag it in. And Painting is a push and pull. It's kind of fun. If y'all hadn't tried it, you need to. Maybe make that a little darker. This might be too dark. Part of that is. All right, do you see how, how bright this is compared to how bright that is? This whole part of the dog, even this part of the fur, needs to be less as bright. I mean, this is the brightest part. These are competing, so I've got to tone that down. Sometimes you don't realize, oops, well, it's okay to have a little dark in there. And we'll come back to that. All right, so now that I have some dark in my brush, I'm just going to blur it out to get a little bit more. Transparent brown oxide, a little bit of red oxide, a little bit of um, gold, um, sorry, yellow ochre. So I'm just kind of glazing on top, but I want to do it as though the strokes of the fur are still there. So if I, so I still keep the feel of, of the fur. And when I squint now, when I squint, this is much darker than this. This is too light right there, so I'm going to go over it just barely, toning that down a little bit. Again, the joy of letting your painting dry. The joy of, of oil is uh, it dries slow, and that's also a pain because it dries slow. So if you're in the time crunch to finish a painting, some of these things I'm showing you today aren't possible because the paint's wet. So tell your clients that um, you'll have a better painting if it's not brushed. So I'm just squinting my eyes now, looking for the variation of value. And uh, see a little bit of light coming in here. Yeah. I'm going to add, that's a little too, too red. There's some gold that comes out from his face. I'm not, from his pillow, from his nose. So I want to make sure that's all the way around. Needs to be a little lighter. You can lay it in that way, wipe your brush off, come back, do short little strokes to pull it out. I like that better. Needs a little more light in here. Okay, I need a little more dark in through here, but I think I need to do it with the thin brush. But I'm looking at the fur along here. I kind of got it off a little bit. So I'm going to come back here and make that part a little darker. Oh, it's probably too light. Let me add black hood face. See, the only way you can show form is if you change the uh, value. That's much better. 
All right, as I lean back, this part right here is like a highlight. It's the brightest part of the fur, and there's a little bit of it right here. And I'm close to that, but I was having a hard time with what was on my palette. So I might get out a little Indian yellow and give that a try in a minute. But I do want to finish his teeth and a little bit of uh, fur that's uh, hanging out right here. So I'm going to put just a dab of lighter fur or lighter touch there and then try to drag it out with the brush. Get a longer brush or a skinnier brush that didn't show enough length on it. So I'm back to my tiny brush. It's not the tiniest I have, but I'm going to see if I can do some. That's not bad. Okay, I'll come back with dark and pull up into it. Break it up a little bit. Okay. Wow, it's raining outside. It is pouring. orange which Okay, when I squint, these are lighter 
and anywhere down here. Sorry, talking with my brush between my mouth. Shouldn't do that. I want this back here a tad lighter. But I don't want it as intense of a color. It's uh, more muted. Might have gotten a little too bright. Now that looks like a happy dog. 